Hi everyone, my name is Man. And my name is Daniel. Welcome to FGA's Christmas service. We know that this is probably one of the most different or unique Christmas services you've been to this year. But what we want you to know is that we are so glad that you can join us here today. Over the next hour or so, you'll get to hear some of your favourite Christmas songs, follow along one woman's quest for the perfect Christmas cake, and listen to a short but important message from our senior pastor Rodin. But first, story time! It's that time of the year again. My mother gives me the most difficult tasks. She wants me to order the cake for our Christmas gathering. It's like impossible. I have to guess what everyone wants to eat. My brother doesn't like raisins. Yeah, so no fruit cake. that means. Then if I get lock cake, cannot have Santa Claus because mommy will get angry. Hmm, if I want to invite Buster Rodden, then <laughs> cannot have durian cake. I don't know, I don't know what to do about it. Yeah, so also thinking, what's a budget, yeah? Cannot be too expensive, but all the hotels charge so much. Maybe I'll just make my own flour, eggs, milk, right? Some chocolate. Yeah, maybe I'll make my own. Stay tuned for part two. Nicole will be back later to continue her story, and I can't wait to find out what happens to that cake. In the meantime, let's join our worship team for some festive cheer. Then you will see lyrics at the bottom of the screen, so feel free to sing along.
Number one, it's so expensive. My total bill for the ingredients was like the groceries for my whole week. My arms are sore, you know, from all the stirring. There isn't that, like any clean pot in the house. And I'm like pretty much covered in eggs, flour and vanilla essence. And what do I have to show for? This sad looking cake. I don't know, I, can't, I cannot serve this to my family. Now I know why people charge so much for the cake. Oh, okay! issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judah to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register of with Mary, pledged to be married to him and was ex expecting a child while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to the God in the highest heaven and, uh, and on earth, peace to those whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, 
the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, that the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. After the shepherds had seen him, they told everyone. They reported what the angel had said about this child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary kept all these things like a trick or treasure in her heart. She thought about them over and over. The shepherds returned. They gave glory and praise to God. Everything had seen and heard was just as they had been told.
Take it away, Rodin. I must have been about 10 years old when my mom and her sister, my aunt, decided that they wanted to go and check out this new mall that had sprung up. 
at that time, we lived in the eastern part of Singapore, and Parkway Parade had just come up, and it was the talk of the east. Uh, I think everybody was excited that there was a mall now that was accessible to us who were living in the east. And so my mom and my aunt said, hey, let's go and check this thing out. And I was invited to go along. I was quite thrilled about the invitation, and so I went. Um, we came into the mall and was big and sprawling, and we walked into a variety of shops. And if I'm going to be honest, it wasn't very long before the excitement of the idea faded away to the reality of having to walk with my aunt and my mom and stay in a shop while they you know, peruse and they browse and they spend time. And so I quickly found myself getting quite bored. And as I tend to do when I uh, was bored, I would start imagining things in my head. I would you know, create songs and stories. And uh, as I was just you know, kind of getting caught in my own imagination, I was just following my aunt and I decided I would just, you know, lag a little bit behind as I would follow my aunt through those shops. And so we walked through various shops and we came out and walked along the corridor to another shop. And, and I was just walking there, you know, the periphery of my vision, trying to keep an eye on my aunt. And so a couple of uh, paces behind my aunt, I would just, you know, tag along. Uh, and so this happened for a while and we eventually my aunt turned into a department store and I followed suit and she went in and, you you know, perused and browsed through a variety of clothing and I just you know stayed in a little corner and then as she moved I followed along and and then I decided to do something as she turned the corner I decided to look up and when I did eventually I got the shock of my life because I had been following a total stranger this was not my aunt all the while I had the perception that I was following my aunt but this was not my aunt and this lady had no idea I was even following her because I was a couple of paces behind. And so she left and carried on with whatever, and I realized I was absolutely lost. I realized I had no idea where I was or where I needed to go. I had no idea where my mom was or where my aunt was in that moment. I froze. And I remember this deep sense of dread and you know, sort of fear came over me because I realized I have no idea what to do in this moment. You know, I, I think of that story and think it, it might be sometimes similar uh, to life or could be similar to life as well that we are in pursuit of something, we are following something. You know, maybe you're following your dream, maybe you're following your education, maybe you're trying to follow uh, in the footsteps of your parents in their career, uh, you know, that we're pursuing some things and uh, we're all on a journey somewhere. And so we, we hope that we, you know, we'll pursue success and we'll pursue maybe greater wealth or we pursue greater relationships. And uh, we have this dream that we're chasing after. And every now and then, right, we stop and we look up. And then it kind of feels a bit weird and we wonder, am I following the right things? Am I, am I chasing the right things? Uh, does it really matter what I am pursuing? You know, if you ever find yourself in that situation, I've got some good news today because, you know, I've come today to share a little bit about Christmas. You see, and Christmas is the story of not what we pursue, but the story of a God who is in pursuit of us. You see, the thing that happened to me that day at Parkway Parade was when I realized I was lost, I realized I did not know how to get home, I realized I did not know how to even find my mom or my aunt. What I did not know was that even though I felt completely terrified and lost, my mom and my aunt were in hot pursuit of finding me. They would have gone to any lengths to locate me and to make sure that I was okay. And obviously things turned out all right. It wasn't very long after when my mom and my aunt found me and there was a great sense of relief because I found the relationship that mattered the most that day. And that's really what Christmas is. You know, Christmas, I know we celebrate with the food and I think it's great today that we can connect a little bit more with a few people. Um, you know, and we want to celebrate uh, the season in so many ways. We give gifts and we sing songs and all that's wonderful. But the essence, the heart of really what Christmas is, is a story of a God in pursuit of his children who even unbeknownst to them have been following the wrong things. And if we stop and think, we have found ourselves to be lost. You know, this heart that belongs to God actually is in the heart of God from the very beginning. 
In the beginning of the Bible, there's a story of God creating Adam and Eve. And, and Adam and Eve and God had this wonderful relationship. But what happened is that Adam and Eve decided to sin, to do their own thing, to be disobedient to God. And then they realized their mistake. They realized their sinfulness. And their choice at that point was to run away, to hide. But what does God do? God takes the initiative. God pursues them. And God asks Adam, Adam, where are you? And we have stories in the Old Testament of prophets who choose to do their own thing rather than follow God. And God comes to them a second time. You know, John, one of the close uh, disciples of Jesus, writes about how when Jesus was born, the reason he was born was so that this God would become flesh and he would dwell among us. One translation says that Jesus becomes flesh and moved into the neighborhood. You know, we're told over and over again that God is in pursuit of his children, you and me. And God's heart is that we would come to a place to realize that what we've been pursuing may not be the most important thing. I'm not saying don't pursue success or don't pursue an education, but I am saying that there's something greater, more meaningful, more significant than just the things we're pursuing. Maybe today you will look up and realize you are in need of a relationship. And in that relationship, all the weight of your fear and your worry can dissipate and can leave you because you found the relationship that matters the most. And so what maybe you're asking, you know, Rodden, if it's true that God is pursuing me, how can I know this God? How can I, how can I respond to this God? Three very simple things, A, B, and C. A is to acknowledge God. And that means you acknowledge that Jesus is God and that Jesus came to walk on this earth as the Son of God. And as the Son of God living here, He came in order for us to know God. And we believe and acknowledge that we are in need of Him. We acknowledge that our way doesn't actually lead to life and life abundantly. B is for us to believe. And what do we believe? We believe that this child that was born at Christmas grows up and he dies on a cross. Now that's a horrifying way to die, but why does Jesus, God becoming flesh, dying on the cross, why was that necessary? You see, because there's a gap between us and God. God is in pursuit of us, but in order for us to have relationship with God, this gap has to be closed. What causes this gap? What causes this gap is sin. Sin is our willful disobedience to God, and God is holy, and He demands our holiness. So the only way for us to come into relationship is if we believe and acknowledge that Jesus became sin for us, and He took upon Himself our sinfulness, and the price for our sin has been paid. So we acknowledge and know that Jesus lived a holy life, that we believe that Jesus died for our sin, and we do the third thing, the letter C, we change. And what do we change? We change direction. We change the way we think and understand who we are and what the world is about. And what is that change? It's saying that I'm no longer just going to pursue my own thing. I'm no longer just going to pursue my own desires or my own dreams. I'm going to give up, in a sense, the pursuit of what I think is best. And I'm going to turn and pursue God. You know, there's no greater feeling than pursuing one who is also pursuing you. And God is in pursuit of us. That's what Christmas shows us. That God was willing to go to every length to pursue us, to come here, to reveal himself, to show us who he is, so that we can choose to also respond to him. And maybe today, if you will do that, you will choose to acknowledge God, you will choose to believe in Jesus, and you will choose to change your direction, then you today can discover what I felt as that little kid, that sense of joy and relief when my mom and my aunt found me, because I found the relationship that mattered most in that moment. You know, why is it we pursue the things that we pursue? 
We do it because it's valuable to us. If you lose something that's got no value to you, you don't think about it. But if you lose something that is of great value to you, you go to great lengths to find it. You upheaval stuff, you throw things around, you clear things until you find it. Why? Because it's precious and it has value. You need to know this. The reason why God is in pursuit of us, because to Him, we have great value. And so I want you to know this this Christmas, that you are valued by God and He has done everything to pursue you. If you will allow Him to pursue you, would you choose today to also pursue Him? And perhaps this Christmas will be the greatest Christmas you've ever experienced because this Christmas you will come to this relationship with the God who is pursuing you. God bless you and I wish you a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Oh, God.
If you want to know how this saga ended, uh, basically, I didn't buy a cake. I bought a simple pandan cake and I decorated it with everyone's favourite things. You guys want to take a look? Are you ready? Ta-da! Look at it, it's so cute, right? You know guys, this experience has really taught me something about myself that I was basically chasing on all the wrong things. The important thing was not the cake, it's why we have the cake. And why do we have the cake? Because it's someone's birthday. And that someone is... Jesus! We're celebrating his birthday. I mean, we are always inevitably chasing the wrong things and, you know, always looking for the unreachable stuff. So tell me, what are you guys looking for this Christmas? Let me know in the comments. Before we end our program for today, we wanted to invite you to our new sermon series starting in January called... A Better Investment. We know this will be a useful and practical series for you. For more details, please check our website. Thank you so much for joining us for today. We hope that you have a wonderful, happy and blessed Christmas. Bye-bye. Follow us on social media.